Hey guys, I was getting a lot of comments about the governor system on this 1958 Briggs Model 6B that I rebuilt in a three-part video series. In case you didn't watch it, uh, I put new rings, new valves in it, and I uh, fixed the coil on it, put another type of coil on it. But I got a lot of comments about how this uh, governor works here. And so I'm going to take the flywheel cover off here. I'm going to show you exactly how everything works on this. Okay, so looking at it with the air filter and the flywheel shroud removed, you can see all the parts to the throttle and governor system. And this is the air vane governor, very similar to how Pushmar engines work. Usually on these engines here, you'd have a mechanical governor with the weights inside the engine, but it's different on this. Okay, so the, the, you got a real short linkage here between the throttle plate and hooks directly to the governor arm here. Right here is your governor spring, which is connected to your throttle rod. That's what I'm calling this. You see it goes through here. And you see when you push down on the rod, it's putting more spring tension on the governor. And when I was pulling up on it while it was running, that was taking all the weight of the rod off that spring. So it was going back to the actual idle speed, which was set by this screw right here. So as soon as that as soon as the weight of the rod goes on there, it's actually probably running just a little bit above idle speed like that. And that's just a preset speed for the uh, engine. So if you're going to put a manual throttle on this, you see it's got a clamp down here. You'd have to put it on that other hole in that rod right there. Right beside where the spring hooks. That'd be where your throttle cable would connect to. Then you'd be pulling this rod down like this to override the uh, preset speed. And this, that rod right there would only go down so far to limit the uh, speed. This appears to have threads on it that's wore down, so at some point you're probably able to adjust it some. Now that probably won't turn on if it was even designed to. I'm not real sure on that to be honest about, about it. So when the engine's running, your air force is going this way because this flywheel spins this way. So that's going to force it to idle. Then when your engine speed slows down, this is going to allow it to open up depending on how much tension is on that spring to what RPM it's going to be regulated at. So it's a, it's a typical governor system. It's just a little different with this rod here. And I think that's what's throwing, the, throwing everybody off on it. And it's a... My bigger engine that you've seen on my uh, mini tractor project I was working on, it has a similar setup, but everything was missing on it. But it had a rod up here, and when the throttle, before the rod got lost, you could pull, I think you pulled up on it to put more tension on it. And uh, But it's a very similar setup. And I've only seen this on the, the small updraft and the big updraft. I've never seen this on the mid-size updraft probably, it's like on an eight horsepower. I've never seen that on, seen it on it. And in case you're wondering how I did this, I just put a couple of nuts in there to act as a spacer and a washer about the same thickness as the coil because that's how that mounted to the one of the four bolts. So you can see only one bolt's not being used to hold the coil on there. I got the ground wire hooked on the front right there. So that's how that works. And this just pivots on that metal plate right there. But yeah. And on this carburetor, I know I said it's, a, it's a, the same as the uh, other updraft carburetor, but I'll just briefly talk about it while we're looking at it. This is your main mixture adjustment screw, which is real stiff on this one. And this is the idle mixture adjustment. And this is the idle speed adjustment screw here. And like I said, the chokes broke on there. It won't, the lever's gone. So if I could find one, I'd like to replace that. I don't know if I can get a new one or not. I do have an extra carburetor for this, and I didn't show it in the video, but I do have one for it. In the video it run, this worked loose because I didn't put a, a lock nut on it. I didn't have a small enough one for it. I got some now, I need to put one on it while I'm thinking about it. And the fuel line just runs over here to the uh, uh, fuel valve here. You just turn this, shut it on and off. And this tank does have a a drain plug on it, so I like that. So if I'm running it and don't run it dry, I can just drain the gas out of it. And this tank, 
I'm gonna put it show you. You can kind of see it. It has a strainer inside it. You see that tank's fairly clean. I, I cleaned it out with BBs and bolts and stuff just to get the worst of it out. And that screen should catch anything else. And I had another comment about the, how come I didn't get shocked when I shut that off when it was running. Well, as soon as you shut this off, the output of the coil is going straight to ground. So you could touch the plug wire right here as soon as this is, as long as that's touching it. And you're not going to feel nothing because there basically is no voltage here because it's shutting out the out output of the coil. But if you get your fingers stuck in between here like this, that's going to shock you pretty good. Or if you grab a hold of it like this, it's going to light you up too. Or if, you, if you're holding it with one hand, you, you use your other hand to shut it off and you miss it and you hit that, it's going to be good. <laughs> so you just want to be careful with that. And just As long as you do that, you're fine. But uh, I've always liked that. A lot of people are afraid that you're going to get shocked. But as long as you keep your finger on that plate, you're fine. But Well, guys, I just want to make a quick little video about that because uh, uh, it's kind of hard to explain in text on a comment. And I figured I'd just uh, show you here and make a part 3.5 for this engine. <laughs> so if you got any more questions or comments about this, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And try to help you out so thanks for watching we'll catch you on the next one